there and welcome to Startup Central. I'm Nantana Rai. This is the only show of its kind dedicated, of course, to startups, technology, innovation, disruption. If it falls under the bracket of the new economy, it's here every weekday at 6 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, like the startups we feature on the show, Team Startup Central loves constructive feedback. PM. Ladies and gentlemen, like the startups we feature on the show, Team Startup Central loves constructive feedback. Don't hold back. Keep writing into us. Tell us what you want to see on the show, how we can do things differently, what you don't like about it. We also like compliments. We lap it up so you can send us those as well. Our email address right on top of your screens, suc at etnow.tv. I'm also on Twitter. You can reach out to me directly. Now, of course, you couldn't have had a bigger uh, uh, disruption than coronavirus. Now, having said that, the, one of the biggest trends we've seen, thanks to lockdown, is work from home. As work from home picks up and the jury's out on whether we are ever going to go back to our offices the way we're used to, what we've also seen is a rising trend of phishing, a rising trend of hacks. How can you prevent yourself from being a victim of a cyber attack? What are the hacks against hacks? Pardon my fun over there, but I'm going to discuss that and a lot more today with my guest uh, Saket Modi. He's the co-founder and CEO of one of, uh, of India's most uh, valued cybersecurity startup. Saket, uh, thanks so much for joining us here on Startup Central. You know, we've been reading about ever since the lockdown began. I guess hackers have been very restless. It's also the perfect time, uh, perhaps a paradise for them. How bad has it been when we talk about cybersecurity? Have you seen an alarmingly high level of cyber hacks? Sure. Uh, first of all, Nandara, it's always a pleasure to be with you on the show, and thank you so much for having me here. Uh, before we jump into cybersecurity and the hacks that's going up, let's understand what's happening to cyber. And then we jump into cybersecurity, right? It's a very interesting stat, which was actually uh, which came out from an IDC report, where uh, the digital transform uh, digital transformation uh, services has actually the forecast for the whole market has actually grown by almost 10.4 percent in this year to almost 1.3 trillion dollars. We all know about work from home. Technology is the only way now in which. In, irrespective of your shape and size as a company, uh, you have to adapt to otherwise you will die. And when that's when uh, when that's become an obvious thing which everybody is relying on, the hacks in that or disruption to technology is a business problem now. It's not just a back office problem with people in the back office trying to give you an antivirus and trying to interrupt you with the business that you're trying to do. And that is the reason why there's a huge upsurge in the kind of hacks which have been happening. Uh, in fact, uh, according to a report from Subex, which came just uh, uh, in the last three months, there was almost a 46% increase in critical attacks on various kinds of smart devices around the world. Uh, Checkpoint said there has been almost 71% of the respondents uh, during February and March reported that they've actually seen an increased number of attacks that have been happening um, on their network, on their endpoints, which are there. Uh, in fact, Mimecast state, uh, the, the report said that there has been almost 60% of the organization expect to suffer from an email-borne attack in the coming year, uh, given the situation that everybody is is in right now. So there's a huge surge in the attacks, and if you see uh, not only hacktivists or not only uh, smaller groups of people are trying to attack, but uh, you actually have nation state or state sponsored activity which has started. and. Uh, that's that's become a matter of concern uh, with a lot of issues which are going on around the world. Yeah, in fact, uh, look at what Australia has said. Australia has actually said this that its uh, a cyber world is under attack. Uh, but you know, the fact is, uh, all of this is happening on the dark web. We don't know who it really is behind it, and. If companies are not able to protect themselves, uh, how are nations doing it? We've also seen, you know, recent reports, the last 24 to 48 hours, uh, which is a bit scary for India as well. There, there have been reports coming out how India is also under attack. That is that is very very that's very very correct, uh, Nantara. Again, just think of it like this, right? When uh, 
the the thieves go wherever that's there's most money exactly in the same way in the world of hacking uh when things have been now digitally transforming itself hackers have been hackers have been very very active and you now have new things like hacker as a service the, you know you've heard of software as a service you've heard of infrastructure as a service now you've got hacker as a service where you can go to the deep web and the dark web don't pay any money just give the target email id or social media handle uh, that you would want somebody to be you know to be to, to be hacked into and the hacker will actually come back to you in with screenshots or some kind of a proof that the person has been able to intrude into their account or the targets of the victim's account and once you're convinced that yes this is the real data only then you actually go out and pay the money it's almost like cash on delivery and by the way it doesn't end there it actually it actually goes to the next step where they send you a uh, a survey form of how did you like their service how would you like to rate them and if you go ahead and and share their uh, you know their, their coupons with your friends you actually get 20% discount uh, the next time you use them so it's a pretty customer centric uh, industry that's coming out uh, not so much in the deep web and dark web only but now a lot of that happening in the clear clear web uh, you can find a lot of these results on google itself unfortunately but but there's an absolute surge in terms of the number of attacks that we are seeing on our customer side Okay that's uh, pretty innovative so you've given us one idea and and one instance of how they're doing it uh, since we have you here and you know I, the idea of getting you here was also to scream a big beware watch out uh, what else is picked up just so that people know what else is out there that they need to be really really careful of yeah there's a there's a famous lao tzu saying which says no thy enemy <laughs> <laughs> the reason i start from there is right when you say what's out there the first question is obviously uh what's the kind of hackers or what are the threat actors which are there in general you know if i were to break down the threat actors nanta right to be you know starting from data extortionists whose only intent intent would be data till information brokers which go ahead and take the data and then exchange that in a lot of exchanges uh most of that would be used in marketing or targeted ads that would be coming to you crime facilitators where you actually have a lot of physical crime unfortunately having happening this is on the virtual information or the reconnaissance that is that is that is gathered digital robbers whose only intent is your wallet or your uh, or your or your uh, you know or your net banking username and password scammers which will you know scam you we've seen so many uh you know frauds happening on upi etc etc uh and 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 insiders you know frankly that you know that's uh, your own employees who have an access to certain data and then the last sector would be really state sponsored uh, state actors where uh, you actually have a very structured program uh, there was a very famous mandiant report a couple of years back which actually highlighted very clearly uh, the efforts of china for example uh, which actually has army of a few thousand people full time deployed by the chinese government whose only intent is to go ahead and and infiltrate into digital ecosystem of nation states on the other side and 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 get the data and use that to decision making or you know diplomatic relationships or even in war if that if, if that, that that the need comes to bear so there are different kinds of threat actors with different kinds of motivations uh and a lot of these people really uh you know have different degrees of acceptability of being caught uh unfortunately cyber security or cyber crime is one of those businesses where the 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 ratio of people who are caught for reported cyber crime is well less than 1% so imagine a business model where the odds of your success can be more than 99% uh that unfortunately is a very lucrative field for a lot of young techies and hackers and therefore you see so many hacks but you see so little news around who was caught for everything that goes wrong out there so so those are the kind of things which we are seeing in the deep web dark web and at the same time with our customers that there is a surge especially for more structured more financed uh well thought through uh attacks in, you know to to large enterprises which at the end of the day even affect individuals because those are enterprises are at the end of the day serving customers and most of them now online so that's what we are seeing in tara 
So I take that point, and you know, in fact, uh, it's structured. You obviously don't know. But then how are you supposed to stay ahead of the hackers, right? Because they, that, that's what they do 24-7, try to figure it out. It's perhaps a thrill for them, an addiction for them. So how are startups, entrepreneurs, or, or just regular folks supposed to stay ahead of that? What, what, would you have any pro tips for anyone who's tuning in? Absolutely. And I think uh, the common tip for organizations or individuals is to start with assuming everything is already hacked. And I'll explain what this means. When you put an email thinking that it is only intended for a recipient and it will never come out, when you click a picture and send somebody, uh, when you have a, you know, you're giving away your password to your to your friends, assuming it'll only stick to them and nothing's going to go wrong. I think that's where the awareness becomes a problem. The next problem that most individuals or most companies have, they don't have a metric to really being able to see how how secured are you really. So if I asked you a simple question, Nantara, how secured or how much battery is there on your cell phone? You have a real-time objective answer saying, Saket, I have 73% battery. And if you click on the battery, it actually tells you how much battery is being utilized with, with, with what apps. But if I asked you how secured is your smartphone, or are you smart enough to use your smartphone, is it secured enough? You don't have an objective number out there. And, and that's where, you know, you can go ahead and trying to get to a metric for an organization or for an individual and trying to see, look, this is how secured I am. And, and most companies are going towards that enterprise cyber risk quantification space where you need to start by saying, what is my body temperature right now? And then you say whether I have fever or not. Exactly in the same way, how secured am I as a company? Uh, even it's good or bad, and then you go, okay, from here, if I have to go somewhere, uh, what can that journey be like? So awareness, and then having quantitative metrics, which is based on real signals of cybersecurity sensors in your network, in your phones, in your laptops, all adding up to give you a simple to understand metric uh, is, is where we are seeing uh, the world is moving towards, and uh, there's a huge uptick for most companies for solutions like this. Okay, and what about password authenticators? You know, one has been hearing a lot about that. Yeah, so password authenticators, in other words, multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication, uh, I would say it reduces the likelihood of an account takeover or an account breach by more than 90%. So I highly, highly recommend every person out there to enable two-factor authentication on your Gmail or your Yahoo or any email or your social media or, or any kind of an account, frankly, because that really is a game changer in terms of adding a new dimension of security. Uh, but, but is it that if you have two-factor, you cannot be hacked? Uh, unfortunately, that's not true. It does take the likelihood of the breach down, but there is still a likelihood and there are still ways to, you know, breach into you. But that can be an acceptable part of the risk which is there. Can you share with us what are good authenticators to get? Yeah, there are a lot of free of cost ones. Like if you have an Apple system, you have something called Keychain. There's a very good uh, authenticator called LastPass. Uh, there's another very uh, popular one which I've seen a lot of people use free of cost is on your browser uh, where you can actually store a lot of those you know credentials. For two-factor, you can actually just download the Google Authenticator, uh, which basically enables you or you can take a screenshot, uh, 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 you can read the QR code. So for the first factor authentication, which is your password, you want complex passwords being stored in password managers. For the second factor authentication, uh, you can either use an SMS way, but that can be sometimes unreliable if you don't have network or coverage. I recommend a mobile application called Google Authenticator free of cost, download that, and you actually get a code which stays for a few seconds, and you can use that code to put in your second factor authentication to actually be able to log in, and which works without a cell phone connectivity or even an internet. I'll make this my last uh, question, uh, Saket, uh, because we're also running out of time. Now, if uh, the hackers are having a field day and the you know lockdown, work from home, uh, a situation is a paradise. I'm sure it's uh, good for business, uh, for those in cybersecurity like yourselves. Uh, 
that, that, that is correct, Nantara. In fact, when we were going into the COVID time, uh, we had actually expected that we'll have some very slow traction because the cash flow would stop, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm still a few days to go away from my quarter. It looks like we'll have the best quarter we've ever had in the history of our company. Cash flow still remains a problem because cash nobody wants to pay right now. But in terms of order bookings, it actually looks very good. Okay, so are you going to go into fundraise? Is that possible? Well, the good part is we're fundraising with our customers paying us. So I think that's the number one way by which an enterprise customer a company should look at fundraising. Uh, we, uh, based on that, there's a lot of interest from investors uh, because they, they want to be investing in a sector which they know in the post-COVID era will be very, very relevant and cybersecurity definitely is one of those sectors. So, so definitely good, you know, good time. Uh, we will see uh, based on variables and parameters uh, whether we go with the fundraise or not anytime soon. Uh, but as of now, business looks very, very healthy and we are actually growing in triple digit uh, literally quarter on quarter. Okay, Sakit, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on this edition of Startup Central. More importantly, for sharing uh, and being so candid about uh, the various uh, hacks against hacks. Uh, look forward to another interview with you soon in the future. Thank you for having me here, Mantara. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.